Thanks so much for joining me today. This is Philosophy. Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to get into how you can follow your dreams while also pursuing financial independence, retire early or fire. So let's kick this video off by talking about traditional retirement. I think the idea or the concept, let's say, of traditional retirement is quite a bit overrated. What I mean by that is that I think a lot of people strive for this very idyllic situation in retirement where they're basically lying on a beach, sipping cocktails, not having to worry about absolutely anything and just relaxing for the next 20, 30, 40, however many years. So this idea that once you retire, you're kind of moving into the kind of life that you want to be living and you're finally done with work and now you can actually do the things you want to do, I think is sort of ridiculous when you think about it, especially if you're doing a traditional retirement age at around 65 or 70. So that would mean that the majority of your life that you're living, you're really not pursuing anything that you really want to do or anything that you really enjoy. You're basically just slaving away at a desk or in the field or doing whatever job that you like to do until you get to that magical age or that magical number and then you can finally start enjoying your life. Of course this is not realistic and I wanted to kind of explore some other alternatives that you can do while you're still pursuing FIRE, financial independence, retire early. I think one of the biggest things about looking forward to a retired type of lifestyle is that you want to already have that kind of life built up where you have a really good social network, you have a lot of awesome hobbies, and you have a lot of things outside of your current work life that you really look forward to doing. So that once you have this life sort of planned out and you're already living it and already doing it, once you hit retirement, all you really need to do is shift your time so that you can spend the time that you would be in the office or in the field or whatever into doing the things that you already do outside of work. I don't think retirement is meant to be the answer to a lot of people's problems. If you're already quite unhappy in your life and you want to work at a job you really don't enjoy for a really long time just to get to this magical place where you can retire and finally do the things you want to do, you should really be trying to build that kind of lifestyle before you retire so that when you do transition from working full time to not working at all, you really have an abundant life that will take up most of your time and keep you feeling really fulfilled. If you're kind of struggling in finding some purpose in your life and finding some good hobbies and doing things outside of work that really you enjoy and that you want to pursue maybe later in life and keep it with you long term, is number one to really start practicing gratitude. And what I do or what I've done in the past is keep a gratitude journal. Every day I will write five to 10, maybe even more things that I'm really grateful for in the now, things that I already have and already enjoy. This really makes you feel like you already have so many of your needs met and you're already doing a lot of things that make you happy essentially. After you do this kind of exercise, then you can start branching out and realizing new hobbies, maybe trying some new interests out and seeing if that adds to that kind of list. And if it doesn't, that's okay too. It's always great to just go out and try a few different things and see what you like. So part of this channel is talking about the philosophy of life and talking about how money kind of fits into that. Hence the name philosophy, of course, but a big journey of mine throughout my entire life has been reading about more spiritual type of books, kind of going inside yourself and self-reflecting. A lot of people call them self-help books. I don't really see them that way. I think it just kind of opens your mind to different ideas and thinking about things in a different way. So I have a few books right here beside me that I've read in the past and I really, really recommend if you're struggling and finding meaning in your life or finding some kind of purpose to propel you towards a more longer term goal, but to also make sure that you're really making the most out of the now and living in the present. So the first book is A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. I've read this book probably five or six times throughout my life. I bought it in high school when I was struggling with some mental health issues, including depression and a few other things. And I did really find that this book helped me sort of open my mind up to new ideas and new ways of thinking and trying to kind of change my perspective and how I was living my life. This is one that I really, really recommend. If you're, it's more on like a spiritual side, I would say, than actual concrete steps of doing things, but it, it did help me with just kind of broadening my sense of openness, I would say. 
This next book is called Man's Search for Meaning by Victor E. Frankel. And this book is really deep, really intense. It really takes you on a journey of a man's experience in concentration camps. And it's super, super interesting to see this man's journey through going through all of these absolutely horrendous things and how he was able to kind of keep his shit together and move past just being a, you know, like bag of bones, which is essentially what our bodies are. We're not our physical bodies were more than that. And this is a really good book for kind of putting things in perspective, putting your own issues and things like that in perspective. So definitely a great book. It's, you know, not super thick, so it's an easy read. The next book is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey. I bought this book a couple years ago at a thrift store actually, and I had heard a lot about it. It's a really awesome book if you're kind of struggling with where you need to go in your life, what kind of purpose you want. Maybe even if you're in a job that you actually enjoy, this is a great book to help you kind of plan out how to make yourself more effective and go through life in a more purposeful, meaningful way. The last book I'm gonna mention is called Crucial Conversations. It's by four different authors here. And I just picked this book up at the library probably a week or two ago, and I've just gotten in maybe a third of the way through. It's really, really interesting the way that they lay out how to have really critical conversations with people in your life. And I think it really lets you introspect and think about the way that you are talking to people and how you can be more confident and be more, not persuasive, I wouldn't say it teaches you how to be like manipulative or anything in a conversation, but it definitely teaches you to think about the things that you're saying before you say them and make sure that it's coming from a place of purpose and that you're really in tune with your emotions and the things you actually want out of life. This book, I don't know if I would recommend it to everybody, but I think it's definitely a good book if you struggle with social situations and confrontation or talking to people about really important matters and you feel like maybe your voice isn't always heard. Um, this is something I can struggle with at times and I, I think it's a good book if that's kind of like an issue that you might have in life. Now we're just gonna briefly touch on following your dream and how to actually figure out what your dream is or what your, let's say purpose. I don't like using that type of phrase because your purpose is really just to be here and be connected and be one with the earth and the world and be you know an active member of society, whatever. But if you want a little bit more kind of purpose in your work and finding something that you really enjoy doing, um, this is a very, very difficult question. I have read many, many books. I've done a ton of reading online and introspected and traveled and you know done all these things to try and find this purpose, this holy grail kind of, this is what I'm meant to be doing kind of thing. And I think it's really a lifelong journey. I think your purpose can change at any moment. I think your dreams can change at any moment. But I do think a lot of people have crucial things in their life that sort of stick around, sort of things that jump out at them. A lot of people are super passionate about traveling, photography, making their own business or starting something creative, like maybe painting or creating beer, cooking, things like that. Certain people I think have a more aptitude to actually pursue that kind of thing in a career format. But trying to figure out what your actual dream is if you're not sure is just a process. And I think trying out different hobbies, maybe different jobs, meeting new people, traveling and doing these kinds of exploratory things will help you in just trying to sort out what you actually want out of life. So now we're gonna talk about FIRE, Financial Independence Retire Early. There's a lot of content out there, I'm gonna say that sort of puts FIRE in a very small contained box, meaning that you, know, you have to save 50% of your income or you have to be like surviving on beans and rice or working in a job that pays a whole lot to be considered part of this community. And I think that that's really quite sad that there are a group of people who try to gatekeep this idea of financial independence, retire early. A really large portion of that community doesn't even really pursue the retire early portion. A lot of them do try to find work or transition into their own business where they actually have a bit more control over what happens in terms of their work life. 
There are many different subsections to fire. I've talked about coast fire in the past and that is the main path that I'm kind of following now. There's also lean fire, there's fat fire, and then there's regular fire. And a lot of the differences between the groups have to do with how much you plan to spend in retirement. But overall, I think the community at a very base level all kind of want the same thing. They want to be financially secure. They want to have a bit of a cushion to fall back on if they have to. And they really, really want the possibility to do things differently. They don't want to have to rely on a paycheck to get through life. They want a little bit more independence from a job to be able to pursue something that they're maybe a little bit more interested in or they just want to give it a go. So don't think if you're not on a path where you're saving like 50 to 80% of your income and you're ready to retire in 10 years that you're not allowed to be part of the FIRE community. It's such a wide, wide range of people doing completely different things and everyone's journey is super unique. There's a lot of information out there in the FIRE community that's incredibly helpful in just managing your finances, investing, and kind of getting ahead of the game. Something that is also really prevalent in the FIRE community is a lot of people who really, really hate their jobs. And not only hate their jobs, but they claim that they absolutely hate working and there's no job out there in existence that they could ever enjoy because they just hate working. Honestly, I think that people just naturally want to do something, maybe not considered work, but people like to make things with their hands. They like to take care of their household. They like to invest in their family and their community and their friends. There's a lot of things that people like to do rather than just like sitting at home watching TV. There's a ton of things out there that isn't really considered work, but things that are maybe considered more hobbies that potentially you could turn into an income source. Investing is a huge passive income source that a lot of people in the community pursue real estate as well, becoming a landlord. And there's just like so many different options in this day and age that you can pursue a lifestyle where you actually get to go out and explore the world instead of just sitting at a desk for eight hours a day, you know, for 40, 45 years, whatever. Talking about people who really, really hate their jobs and these people are normally making quite a bit of money and they are in a situation that is called having golden handcuffs which basically means you're making so much money and your job is relatively easy where you feel like you can't really leave and do something less because it just pays so well. I think this is sort of dangerous territory. If you are in a position where you're like super unhappy, your mental health is suffering and things like that, don't feel like you have to stay in a job just because of how much it pays. If you're in a financial position where you have some options and you have a bit of cash set aside so that you can explore those options. I think it's really crucial to start doing that sooner rather than later so that you can actually try different careers instead of being stuck in one thing forever, regardless of how much it pays. Getting down to kind of the nitty gritty about this is that money is not everything. I know that's kind of cliche, but money is essentially, it's just a tool in life to get you different things. Money is great when you have all of your basic needs covered and you can save a little bit every month. That's when things really start getting more easy, let's say, for a lot of people. My advice would be not to follow a job path just because it pays really well. And I have done this in the past. I have looked at different jobs and looked at different career paths and thought, well, how can I make a lot of money and have kind of an easy job? It didn't even matter if it was something I thought I might enjoy. I was more looking at, okay, what job is going to pay me super well so that I can save a whole bunch of my money and then retire and then do what I want. It seems a little backwards. Now I'm definitely on the path of slowing down my savings rate, slowing down my fire path into a coast fire position where I'm probably gonna retire at 65. I'm, now I'm going to be pursuing going into something that I've wanted to do since high school and that's becoming a helicopter pilot. And it is quite a bit of investment on my end. It's about $60,000 to get that training. And no, they don't make a lot of money starting out. I've seen a few ads for helicopter pilots in my city in Calgary for $15 an hour. So it pays pretty close to minimum wage when you first start out. But at the same time, I am Coast Fire. And if I don't add another dime into my savings for long-term retirement, 
I will still be fine at 65. If you have a lifelong dream of doing something, I would just say don't wait. Don't wait until it's too late, until you're in your 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s to try it. Go and try it. There's got to be something out there that you can do to kind of kickstart the process and seeing if it's something you really, really want to pursue. Don't be afraid if you change your mind at any point in time. I don't think it's natural to pick one thing and stick with it forever. Your interests and your passions and the things that you enjoy doing are always going to change. And that's true for basically everybody. You can pursue your dreams now, whether it be just on the side as a hobby or building that up to actually become something that you can live off of full time. Doing the math is a big thing. I go through math constantly and see where I'm at, what I can afford and what kind of options are open to me at this point or this stage of my fire path. I'm still on that path. I still want to eventually retire, but financial independence is definitely top of the list. I want to be able to choose the things that I do. I want to be able to pick when I want to work, where I want to work, what I want to do for work or to not work at all. So working towards a goal like that doesn't have to be so linear and so one sided. There's so many different options to you guys. And I hope this video has given you a bit of inspiration in what you can do in your own life and try something out, try something different, go a different path. Don't be afraid to kind of skew from the, the norm, even in the fire community. Don't be afraid if you're saving less than 50% of your income, that's fine. So thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate every single one of you watching and leave me a comment below about what kind of dreams that you guys might want to pursue in the future. I really love hearing from you and interacting with you guys in the chat section. So yeah, thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.